Hello and welcome to Gadget Joe and today we're taking a look at the Be Quiet Dat Rock Pro 5. In today's video, we're taking a look at the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 5 CPU air cooler. And as you can see, it is an absolute monster of a cooler. That's because it is one of their flagship coolers. Now, we did recently do a review on the Dark Rock Elite, which I will leave a link in the description down below so that you can go and check that out because the results are very similar to this because they are both marketed as their high-end cooler servers. The only major difference being that the Dark Rock Pro 5 is primarily a standard air cooler with no RGB and the Elite has some RGB at the top. That's pretty much one of the only differences apart from the fan size, which I will touch upon very shortly. So as mentioned, this is a CPU cooler that is designed for the modern flagship high-end CPU series, such as the Intel i9 series, and also the AMD Ryzen 9 series as well. These coolers are effectively an alternative to AIOs. You don't have to worry about any form of liquid cooling, you don't have to worry about maintenance too much because these are super simple. You just pretty much plug and play and they're ready to go with ultra high performance. They even hang with some of the best AIOs on the market, which you will see in the testing later on in the video. So before we dive into other details and the specs of the units, we're going to take a look at what you get in the box. And it's pretty simple. The box itself is nice and large. As you can see, it is a substantially sized box. It's pretty much be quiet as usual with a black box and simple white writing on there with a few images and information on the rear outlining the specifications of the cooler. Now on the top it does say that it's a 270 watt TDP cooler. Now what that means is that this cooler is rated to work for up to 270 watts of thermal design power meaning that it can cope with a really significant amount of energy from the cooler so that it makes sure that your system runs nice and cool, even under high load on a higher CPU. Inside the box, you get the cooler itself. It is all pretty much ready assembled. As you can see, this is how it comes straight out of the box. Everything is nice and compact, considering its large size. Everything is ready to go. There are multiple features of this unit, which I'll touch upon very shortly. You also then get a box featuring some mounting hardware for your Be Quiet cooler. Inside the box you get a user manual and a warranty card and also you get a bag containing more bags. Inside the bag you get mounting brackets for AMD motherboards and also for Intel motherboards. You do get a little tube of thermal paste as well which is a nice welcome addition because this cooler does not come with pre-applied thermal paste on the bottom like some coolers do. This is ideal because you can make sure that the thermal paste application is nice and fresh and also you can apply it to the CPU in your desired way to make sure that the contact is plentiful. So in terms of mounting for the cooler, it does have quite a backlog of mounting options. You do have the Intel 1700 sockets and also the new 1800 sockets which is due to come out very shortly. You do also have 1200, 1150, 1151 and 1155. So there's plenty of options for mounting for Intel. When it comes to AMD, it's a little bit more simple because you just simply have mounting options for AM4 and AM5. Mounting the cooler is super simple because you get an included Be Quiet screwdriver as you do with most Be Quiet products, a very nice addition to the set and it just makes things so much simpler. This is, as you can see, a very long stem screwdriver and that is because when it comes to installing it, once you've got all your mounting hardware in place, you're going to notice that you can simply remove this middle section. By removing this middle section, you can then get access to secure the cooler down to your motherboard. Now this long screwdriver comes in handy here because as you can see, it fits just nicely in the middle here. The fact that Be Quiet make additions such as the screwdriver in their products is definitely another reason why Be Quiet are known for their quality when it comes to the products in general. So before we go through the benchmark results for the Dark Rock Pro 5, we're going to take a look at the unit itself. As you can see, it is a very large cooler, as you can see. Now that's because it does feature an extensive amount of heat fins on the top and also those two large fans. Now those two large fans are Silent Wings fans, so you know that they're going to be nice and whisper quiet. 
when testing them, we had them under full load and you could barely even hear them. I know that's a little bit cliched for me to say because I'm deaf, but yeah, they are super quiet. You do get two different fans included on this. The middle fan is a 135 millimeter unit and the one on the outside is a 120 millimeter unit. This is a much smaller unit and it does feature a nice unique funnel design for really drawing the air away from the cooler to help dissipate the heat from your CPU. Again, these are high performance fans, so they are designed to cope with pushing a large amount of air and drawing a large amount of air through your system. What's more is the front fan is completely height adjustable. You can move it up and down if you need to. And there are also some cutouts on the heat spreaders here so that it can allow for high RAM clearance or VRM clearance. Obviously, if you've got a higher, taller set of RAM, you're going to need to adjust the height of the fan so that it goes slightly higher so that you can get the clearance for that RAM. Although we found that with the kit that we were using, it seems to work just fine as it is straight out of the box. The cooler itself works by dissipating the heat from your CPU cooler via the block that you see here and the heat is then dissipated through these seven high performance copper tubes. Now these copper tubes are coated in a black paint that has ceramic particles in it. For some reason that makes it much better in performance. I don't know exactly how to test that but we'll take Be Quiet's word for that. Being able to remove that middle fan not only makes it easy for installation, it also makes it ideal for maintenance as well. You can simply unplug the fans as you see here, remove it all the way through and then give the cooler a good clean to make sure that the performance is optimal. When you've got that middle fan into position, it really does tidy everything up nicely. As you can see, it has this panel on the end which can actually be removed and it is held into place by magnets. This has a mesh panel on the top as well for extra heat dissipation and as you can see you are left with the bracket mounting for the central fan. On the central fan as well there is also a power switch. Now it's not a power switch as in off and on, it's a power switch that, split, that toggles between quiet and performance. On quiet mode the fans will only spin up to 1500 rpm. On performance mode they will spin up to 2000 rpm. Now obviously spinning at 2000 rpm it is going to be slightly louder but you can then really push your system harder knowing that the cooling is going to be taken care of. Securing the fan into that middle position is super simple as you can see it just simply slides down the middle and there are some grommets that you see here and they just simply pop into position on all corners and that is it. Your whole cooler is assembled and then obviously all you need to do then is take this and pop it on top. It's held in place by magnets and it keeps everything nice and flush and really does finish the design off. It does sit quite tall when it's in your system. The cooler is 168 millimeters tall. So you're going to have to bear that in mind when picking this cooler. If you've got a case that doesn't have a lot of space or it's quite a narrow case, you're probably going to struggle to get this in. So before you pick this cooler, you need to look up on your case to make sure that it will cater for a cooler of this size. What's more is the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 5 is marketed as being compatible with liquid metal thermal grease. Now liquid metal thermal grease is slightly different to normal thermal paste because it is designed to dissipate the heat much better and it's got a much better conductivity rate so that it can really draw the performance out of your system. In turn, obviously, you can really push your system really hard and know that there's going to be no concerns in terms of cooling. So now that we've spent some time talking about the specifications of the cooler, let's put it to the test. We put it to the test amongst a few other coolers, including the low-profile Johnsbo HX4170D an Intel stock cooler, and also the Be Quiet's Pure Loop 2 FX AIO 240mm version and an EK Nucleus CR360 AIO. To begin with, we tested all coolers under a 3 d Mark CPU profile benchmark, which puts the CPU under stress to find out its performance scores across 16, 8, 4, 2 and single core benchmarks. This then causes the CPU to utilise all cores and really push it to the limit which in turn transfers to heat from the CPU. The Dark Rock Pro 5 kept a nice and cool 50.1 degrees, falling slightly below the Dark Rock Elite, whilst the Intel stock cooler vastly trailed behind. The closest was the CR360 with just 0.1 difference. 
The temps did reach a high peak of around 80 degrees during testing, but that was only momentarily under the highest stress point, so I have recorded the average temperatures of each for the sake of testing. I then ran a couple of CPU intensive games in the form of Fortnite and Cyberpunk 2077. I first ran Fortnite in 1080p at ultra high quality settings for 30 minutes. The Dark Rock Pro 5 started to close the gap on nearly 5, falling just short of 0.1 degrees but still a very, very respectable 56.3 degrees. The Intel stock cooler once again was pretty awful, with the best score being hit here by the CR360. Running Fortnite once again at 1440p at ultra high for 30 minutes, and the temperature started to pick up a little bit. But the Dark Rock Pro 5 and the Elite both held in very respectfully, with a 60.2 degrees for the Dark Rock Pro 5, and the gap was tightened even more on the CR360. Finally, we ran Fortnite at 4K quality at ultra high for 30 minutes and naturally the temps rose once more. But as expected, the scores stayed pretty consistent throughout, with the Elite 5 and Dark Rock Pro 5 both hitting an equally impressive 63.1 degrees. Cyberpunk proved a little bit more challenging for the coolers over Fortnite, naturally so with all the additional rendering and shaders needed. We tested it for one hour at 1440p, at ultra settings and it hit 68 degrees and a shockingly low 82 for the Intel stock cooler. Those that have played the game know that it does get the CPU pretty toasty so a consistent 68 degree temperature after an hour's gameplay is a very commendable result. Finally I set to render a 4k 30 minute video using DaVinci Resolve. Video rendering is primarily CPU intensive. Newer systems and graphics cards can help with the final stages of rendering, but predominantly it is a CPU intensive task. The Dark Rock Pro 5 hit a very respectable 51.9, with the Elite pipping it slightly to the post at 51.6, outperforming all of the other coolers except for CR360, which pipped it to the post by just one degree. As you can see, throughout all the tests that we threw with the Dark Rock Pro 5, the cooling performance, the temperatures remained nice and cool across the board. In fact, it actually beat a 240mm AIO and absolutely smashed the Johnsbo and the Intel stock cooler, which is pretty much to be expected. The CR360 did pip both this and the Elite to the post, but again, the CR360 is one of the better AIOs on the market, and it is obviously a 360mm AIO. But the fact that you can get Scores like this on a air cooler is absolutely phenomenal. It really does show just how well this cooler performs under load. Some of you may notice that the Elite actually pipped for the post with this and they are very similar coolers. Now the reason that the Elite pips the post slightly is the fact that the Elite does have two 135mm fans, whereas this has one 135 millimeter fan and a 120 millimeter fan so naturally the cooling ranges differed slightly but very very marginally so you're talking a point degree here and a point degree there not really something to really put this one to shame the performance of the dark rock pro 5 definitely held up for its own and proves that it is a phenomenally high performing cooler. The main difference being is if, as I mentioned before in the video, is if you're wanting a cooler like this, there are two options. You've got the Dark Rock Pro 5, which we see here, and the Elite, which you see in the corner, which again, I've linked in the description, so you can go check that video out. The only difference being is that this one, obviously apart from having a slightly smaller fan on the front, is the fact that this one does not have RGB, and the Elite does have RGB. Basically the same cooler, except for this front panel that you get here, does contain RGB on the Elite. So yeah, that's the only difference. If you're looking for a nice clean aesthetic with zero RGB, then this is probably most likely the one to go for. Now, obviously you can turn the RGB off on the Elite, but you'll find that the Elite, because of that RGB, does actually command a slightly higher premium in terms of pricing. The Dark Rock Pro 5 is phenomenally well priced for a cooler of its stature and performance, you're able to pick these up currently for around 75 to maybe 85 pounds. Expect to pay upwards of 100 pounds for a cooler like this if you're not in sale periods. Despite that high price point, it is definitely worth every penny. You're getting that standard be quiet build quality. You know it's going to perform well. It's really, really well built. There's no 
imperfections anyway. You get all the added features such as obviously web performance and quiet mode. You can adjust for fans to the height that you need them. Maintenance is super easy. Just take this out and blow any dust away from the cooler itself. Take into consideration the fact that you're going to need a large case for a cooler like this. It is pretty much an easy recommendation for me. There are some very large coolers, some that I'm going to be reviewing on the channel. They're going to be coming very soon and they will be going directly against as competition to these coolers. So make sure you hit subscribe so that you don't miss those. But for now, this has been the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 5 cooler, and it is an absolute powerhouse of a cooler. Definitely something I can easily recommend. If you're looking to go for air cooling in your setup, you don't really want to go down the AIO route or alternatively water cooling route in general. This is definitely something to consider. It is going to be able to handle pretty much anything you throw at it and it's going to keep things nice and cool. Even as I've mentioned before, the flagship processors such as the i9s and the Ryzen 900 series, which are phenomenally known to be very, very hot chips. So again, I've been Gadget Joe. This has been the Dark Rock Pro 5. Link in the description as to where you can get one while you're down there. Hit like and subscribe. And until next one, goodbye.